weeks ago, if you're listening, I said it was coming up, looked like it was coming up Trump. This would be his year. Uh, it's definitive at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee for president. He got over 50%. Now, whenever I mention polling on this program, I get a lot of angry emails and even some phone calls from people saying the polling's all wrong, the polling's a lie, uh, the polling is trying to shape public opinion. The polling was right. Every candidate except Ron DeSantis landed about where their polling was last night. Donald Trump uh, got about 51.8% of the vote out of Iowa. If Vivek wasn't in, he probably would have gotten more. He probably could have got close to 60. But the polling average had him at 52. So Donald Trump came in right around where the polling was. Nikki Haley did as well. Vivek Ramaswamy did as well. The only one who was five points higher than the polling average was DeSantis, and that clearly is the ground game, but it was not enough. I have said to you several times that I thought his ground game was good enough. He could possibly, particularly with the weather being so bad, blow out in Iowa, surprise people, and maybe win. Nope. Uh, never backed down, got beat down by the Trump turnout last night, and that's fatal to DeSantis. His campaign is largely out of money, never backed down, is dysfunctional. Uh, I don't see a path for DeSantis. He's in Greenville, South Carolina today, but his campaign's come off the rails. He put everything into Iowa, had the endorsement of the governor, had the endorsement of Bob Vanderplatz, the largest evangelical leader in Iowa. He didn't do well. He won not a single county. For perspective, Nikki Haley won a county in Iowa. She came in third, but she won a county. DeSantis has not a single county in Iowa. Nikki Haley won Johnson County. It's south of Des Moines. It's where the University of Iowa is, college town. She did well in those uh, high-income, high-education areas. Donald Trump swept the rest of the state. He's going to be the Republican nominee. Now, there are some takeaways from Iowa that you got to understand. One is the dumbest talking point. We need to dispel the talking point. This is, it, it, it's kind of infuriating to me. I try to be a straight shooter with you. You know my biases. You know I'm I'm not a, a huge Trump fan. I, I, I think that he can win, but it's going to be more resource intensive than if it's DeSantis or Haley. He's going to be the nominee. Uh, but I just, I really hate the stupid talking points uh, that people come up with as a way to be dishonest with what's happening. And one of the most dishonest talking points today is that Donald Trump suppressed the vote in Iowa, that there were 80,000 less people this time, and it's because of Trump. Now, just use your brain on that if you're not a, a, a brain-dead, broken person. Um, if you see Donald Trump, Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, Chris Christie, Vivek Ramaswamy, Asa Hutchinson, and some dude no one's ever heard of on the ballot, and you want to stop Donald Trump, you don't stay home, you go to the caucuses. But people say, oh, it's 80,000 less than 2016. It's, it's Donald Trump turned people off. No, he didn't. You know what turned people off? It was negative 13 degrees. In 2016, the low temperature, the low temperature was 28 degrees with a high in the 40s. It never got above zero in Iowa yesterday. To say that Donald Trump and not the weather was to blame for low turnout is like saying, I, I don't know, um, uh, Mars is responsible for the tides on planet Earth when never mind the moon right next door. It's, it's dumb. It's a talking point of the aggrieved, and I understand DeSantis supporters are aggrieved today. Uh, I was impressed by his campaign and his organization, but it all fell apart at the end. It does you no good to build up a campaign like that and then have it fall apart at the end. And let's just be honest, it fell apart at the end. Now, there are warning signs for Trump of things he's got to think about moving forward. When you look at where Ron DeSantis did well, the precincts, Ron DeSantis won some precincts. And the precincts all have something in common. They're conservative suburban areas outside of Ames, outside of Des Moines, um, near Cedar Rapids. I said, by the way, that Nikki Haley went outside of Johnson County, outside of Des Moines, actually outside of Iowa City, south of Cedar Rapids. When you look at the map, Vivek Ramaswamy, by the way, won not a single precinct. Ron DeSantis 
won suburban conservative precincts with college-educated evangelicals. Donald Trump won over 51%. He swept the state minus Johnson County, where Nikki Haley won. So the lesson that the Trump campaign can take away from this is that the Republican Party is coming home to him, but he needs to, just for the general election, do something to get these suburban evangelical college-educated voters who may sit it out. He doesn't want to have people sit out the race. Now, where does the race go from here? Well, we head to New Hampshire. Ron DeSantis has gone to, to South Carolina. He's in Greenville today. Uh, those of you listening on WRD, he'll be there near you, and then he's headed to New Hampshire. Haley has gone straight to New Hampshire to campaign in New Hampshire. The latest poll out of New Hampshire, the ARG poll, has Nikki Haley and Donald Trump tied. It's also a terrible pollster. Uh, ARG is not a good pollster. And again, um, rely not on the polls, but the averages. The average got it right. The average got it right. Ron DeSantis overperformed because of his Iowa ground game. He doesn't have that anywhere else. Haley also won moderate liberal voters. Uh, uh, Trump came in second. DeSantis came in third. The lesson for the DeSantis campaign is they theorized badly in that race. Now, what do I mean by that? The DeSantis campaign theorized that people would like a Trump-like candidate, but not Donald Trump. It turns out that the Republican base wants Donald Trump. They don't want a Trump-like candidate. The polling average in New Hampshire has Trump at 43.5 and Haley at 29.3%. So now the other talking point that's coming out of Iowa is that half the Republicans want someone other than Trump. Actually, it's about 49%. You look in New Hampshire, it's over 50% want an alternative. You look in Iowa, it's about half. It doesn't matter. That's the way primaries play out when you have strong contenders otherwise. That's kind of another dumb talking point, like Trump suppressed the vote in Iowa as opposed to the weather. These aren't smart talking points. The reality and the bottom line is that Donald Trump is your nominee, Republicans. Whether you like him or not, Donald Trump's your nominee. Now, I would suggest to the Republican National Convention, you might consider moving your your convention up even earlier. Why? Here's a, a rule of federal campaign finance law, one of the few inviolable rules in politics. You can't take money from the Republican Party or the Democratic Party until you are the nominee of the party. And Donald Trump is not the nominee until nominated at the convention and formally approved. He can't take money from the Republican National Convention. He's got these legal bills. He's got the E. Jean, uh, e. Jean Carroll uh, trial. It starts today. In fact, Trump had to leave from Iowa and go to New York for the trial. So Trump's not even campaigning in New Hampshire. He's in court today. His lawyers are getting paid in large part out of his campaign. He can win the primary based on name ID. He's going to have to put some effort into the general election. He needs the Republican money. They should probably advance the convention. They're not going to, by the way. They've signed contracts. So that leads me to the most controversial point of all and the one that even on social media today, people are very angry at me for making. Donald Trump has all the support. You know who has all the donors? Nikki Haley. The DeSantis people in particular, and even a lot of the Trump people, are furious with the suggestion that maybe Haley should be the vice presidential nominee for Trump. Trump is probably looking at Christy Nome or someone like that in reality, but Nikki Haley's got the donor support. You want to get the donors on your side, Trump? You're going to need the donors on your side. With all your legal bills, you can't get the RNC money until after the convention's over. You might want to consider flooding her. You know, he was very uh, conciliatory in his speech last night said nice things about DeSantis, nice things about Haley. It's very clear the the bigness of his win uh, really shows he is going to be the nominee. It's time to rally the party. It's time to be the leader. It's also time to start ignoring the others. He said very nice, conciliatory things, bringing the party together. What was so interesting is that the news media, other than Fox, refused to cover his speech. CNN cut away from him. Rachel Maddow on NBC, MSNBC talked about how we regret that we can't run his speech because you never know the lies he'll say. It was actually a good speech. By the way, the media treating Trump like that gives him an advantage. 
because one of the things that most people, including people in the Trump team, note is that he's kind of been out of people's minds for a while. He's done the basement strategy. While Joe Biden is visible every day, putting his foot in his mouth, Donald Trump is not. So the reality is by not showing Trump and elevating Trump and putting him in the forefront, it makes people relax a little bit about him. It doesn't build the anxiety people had over him in 2020. It helps Trump. Now, I suspect that's going to change. I suspect the polling will also shift that right now, nationally, uh, Donald Trump is beating Joe Biden in the national polling average by about 1.1%, 45.8 to 44.7. That's going to shift. There actually is data. The Biden administration is pointing people to this in the polling. There are actually a lot of Americans who couldn't believe the Republicans would nominate Donald Trump. They just didn't take it seriously. Now that it's happened, that reality will dawn in. Some of that will shift to Joe Biden. But Trump can win. This is something the Democrats do not appreciate. Donald Trump typically overperforms his polling. In fact, this time in Iowa is the first time he underperformed the average, not by much, only a few tenths of a percent. But Donald Trump tends to overperform, and he's already ahead of Joe Biden. The U.K. defense minister says we're on a pre-war footing globally. If the world descends into chaos under Joe Biden, in addition to the economic effects it'll have, that helps Donald Trump. Republican opponents of Donald Trump and Democratic opponents of Donald Trump have always wanted external events to take out Donald Trump. They've never found the winning argument to take out Donald Trump. And I don't think threats about democracy at this point help. It did to a degree in 2022. I don't think it does now when you've got Democrats throwing Donald Trump off the ballot, refusing to honor the will of the people. I don't think they can make an argument Donald Trump's a threat to democracy when they're shutting down the Democratic effort of people to vote for him. The reality for those of you who don't care for Donald Trump, you consider yourselves Republicans, conservatives, you don't care for Donald Trump, he's going to be the nominee of the party. So you'll now have to come to terms with it. Bringing in a Nikki Haley as a running mate probably helps him consolidate a little more. It's like George uh, H.W. Bush in 1980 became Reagan's running mate. Reagan was the conservative. The establishment went to war against Reagan. They put up Howard Baker. They put up Bob Dole. They put up uh, George H.W. Bush. They put up um, several other people, uh, George Anderson and others. They, They all fell apart. And Reagan put Bush as his vice president. He was perceived as the moderate, and it brought the moderates into the Reagan coalition, and they trounced Jimmy Carter. Trump could do something like that, uh, and he brings the donor class along who are back in Nikki Haley. Whether he does or not, the bottom line for everybody is come to terms with the fact Donald Trump, he's the Republican nominee, and in 2024, we're going to have Biden versus Trump 2.0.